Can I stick a solar panel on my shed roof and use it to power my home servers? More importantly, can it save me anything on my ridiculous energy bills? Or will it just be a massive waste of money? Let's find out. Did you know the UK has one of the highest energy prices in Europe? I live in the UK, I've noticed. I bet some of you have too. It's crazy and I need to do something about it. You see, I have several computers running 24 seven that serve my website, a Mastodon instance that you can follow me on, the link is down below, and I've also got a NAS and a home media server. Now, I could turn them all off, but if we go down that route, I may as well turn everything off and just sit in the dark. But the last I knew, this was 2023, not 1983. Also, about gas prices, just, they don't make any sense. Like, my gas is cheap, we make electricity from gas, but electricity is expensive. Anyway, this isn't a rant about gas prices. I'm done with this nonsense. I'm going to use my engineering wit to get my way out of this, I think. I've got a plan. Hmm? Let's get solar. I mean, they can't take the sky from me. Sunlight's free. We just have to capture it. Except it seems quite difficult at the moment because everybody wants solar. Can't think why. Also, how can I tell a good solar company from a scam? There's quite a lot of those out there. And have you seen the price of these installations? They're not cheap. I tried to get a proper installation back in September. The furthest I managed was to be ignored by companies saying they couldn't get stock and they were too busy. So if I can't have a proper setup, let's go DIY. I was watching the most excellent Control Alt Reese channel, which you should totally subscribe to, and I saw his tidy little solar setup and it had a bit of an idea in my head. I thought, can I do that, but with more power? You see, I'm not trying to make an over-engineered USB power bank. I need to run an entire server farm off this stuff. And this video is not brought to you by anybody. No, nope, this is not sponsored because, you know, I'm not about to wheel out a large battery system and spend 10 minutes showing you how it works. This video is sponsored by me and my unpaid credit card bill. What I am going to do, though, is try to recreate the functionality of one of these boxes of very angry pixies. See if I can do it myself for cheaper. This poses quite a few questions, or design challenges, as we'll call them from now on. Challenges such as figuring out what to even buy, where to put this stuff when I've bought it, and then how much stuff should I be buying? Also, when it's winter and it rains for four months straight, will this system even work? I don't have a budget as such, which is quite dangerous, but I want to ride that fine line between dodgy Chinese crap that might burn my house down and something that's good enough but not top of the range. I mean, the point is, the second a real solar installer wants to talk to me, I'll be shoving all my money at them with maximum enthusiasm. So the more I spend on this, the less I can spend on the real thing when it finally turns up. Okay, so here's the plan. I'm not trying to power my whole house. To do that, I'd be looking at grid tie inverters and the cheap ones off Amazon look a bit like they might set my house on fire. They don't get good reviews. Also, am I allowed to just force electricity back into the grid? Probably not. From excessive watching of my smart meters display, I know the house uses about 300 to 350 watts constantly. With some more obsessive graph watching, I've figured out about 100 watts of that is just from my servers. And with Octopus Energy for my electricity, Specifically, I'm on their Octopus Go tariff, which at the moment gives me 7p per kilowatt from half midnight to half four, which is pretty good, and then an eye-watering 38p per kilowatt for the rest of the day. So a bit of wonky GCSE maths tells me my server uses about 2 kilowatts of expensive electricity per day, which costs about 76p. 76p is not a lot, really, but in a month it's 22 quid and I'd like my electricity bill to be 22 quid less per month, that'd be nice. But those of you more gifted in maths and common sense might start to see a flaw in my whole plan. Stick with it though, we'll get there, don't worry. Lithium batteries are out, they cost too much. Deliberately not buying those because I'd rather have a whole house system if I'm buying the real hardware. So lead acid batteries, they're quite cheap and also less likely to explode in a big fiery mess if I wire them up wrong. They'll just explode spraying acid everywhere instead. Not great, not terrible, perfectly normal behavior. Be fine, we'll deal with it. Turns out I can get a thing called a hybrid inverter that can switch between battery and grid power automatically and charge the batteries from the solar panel. I also need a solar panel, obviously. And I can buy a 300 watt panel for a reasonable price. 
well, then 300 quid each. Um, they're also the real ones with the proper connectors that run at higher voltages than the 12 volt ones that you find all over eBay. So the plan is this. The panel goes on the roof of the shed. It faces west because that's the way the shed points. So it won't catch the sun till the afternoon. But it does get a lot of sun when it's out. The panel is wired to the hybrid inverter, which is then wired to two 100 amp power lead acid batteries. The inverter is also wired to a 13 amp socket for its output. That's where I plug the stuff in that I'm powering. Then a regular kettle lead plugs the inverter into grid power for it to charge up the batteries and bypass itself when its batteries go flat. The inverter doesn't backfeed power into the grid though. It just switches with relays from the grid to the batteries or solar. I've no idea how much energy a 300 watt panel will make in my shed, but even if it only generates 150 watts, it'll be enough to run the machines plugged into it. So maybe I'll only need the batteries when it's dark? Maybe? Again, I have no idea, but that's kind of the point. This is a research project, really. Maybe this system will save me some money by pointing out where I live or the orientation of my house or whatever is actually unsuitable for solar in the first place. Here's the setup. It's been running since September and it's pretty awesome. Like, it works. It actually works. Not just, oh yeah, for 10 minutes it runs a light bulb works. No. When the sun is out in full force, this whole system is off grid and I can run my servers without grid power. Absolutely not. And it runs for hours, like actual hours at a time. You know when you build a thing and it works better than you thought? Yeah, that's sat in my shed now, it's awesome. When there's not a lot of sun, I get about five hours of battery power before it cuts to grid mode. So it's charged up overnight and then it discharges during the day, even if the sun isn't working. Also, have you seen how bloody massive this solar panel is? Like, when it got delivered, I wasn't in, so it got left by the side of my house. And I came home and just went, oh, f it's massive. What am I going to do with this thing? It's too big. But it's not. It's awesome. Imagine if there were, oh, I don't know, seven of them on the roof of my house, all pointing at the sun. Oh, wait. Pretend you didn't see that bit. That's for another video. You see, sod's law happened, didn't it, while making this video. We'll all get into that later. I managed to get a really good Home Assistant integration that gives me complete control of the inverter. It's programmed to charge the batteries overnight, switch to solar only during the day. It also reports lots of lovely statistics about the inverter and makes all those wonderful graphs in Home Assistant work. I can like totally see how well it's working. I'm not just looking at the sun and thinking, yeah, this is cool. I can actually prove it. I've deliberately set the system up to shut off when the batteries go below 80% charge because that's how lead acid batteries work. But I know that this system is capable of running for well over 15 hours if I want to run the batteries totally flat. And since I bought magic solar power batteries, they can tolerate the occasional full discharge. They're not those Halford special leisure batteries that you buy in a massive big black box with a caravan or a boat on the front. But how amazing is that? A bunch of batteries, some seemingly robust hardware, and a solar panel is enough to run moderately high drain devices for multiple hours. If I was some off-grid hermit, or had a caravan or a boat, this setup would be perfect. And then we come to the reality. It's not all sunshine and roses. This is England. Specifically, Northern England, where it is indeed grim. For six months of the year. And when it's bad weather, the panel barely scrapes 20 watts. I'm also coming to the realisation lead acid batteries are fine for starting car engines and other obsolete pieces of tech, but they're no good for power generation systems really. It's not just that their energy density is lower. The issue is really working out how much power is left in them. It's impossible to tell how much the battery is being drained while it's under load. Its voltage fluctuates too much. And if you drain the battery too much, it gets destroyed. Looking back, I probably should have forked out for a proper lithium battery system with an app and everything that's all nice and contained. It would have been portable too. I occasionally go camping and whatever, and dragging a 2 kilowatt box with me would have been handy. I'm kind of stuck now with this bit of a bow tanker. I guess it's a decent UPS though, so there is that, which is quite nice. And compared to the alternatives, it was cheaper. It's not cheap. None of this is. A home solar setup is not a cost effective way to save money. Sitting in the dark and eating cold beans from a can is the way to achieve that. 
so meh it's all right i guess it works it's just a bit you know buy the real thing preferably without super loud fans did i mention this thing is loud when it's running it's like a hovercraft turns out lithium power stations aren't an expensive con after all who would have known i mean half of youtube is advertising them clearly they must be all right my setup cost about half of the equivalent of a branded setup but it's got about a quarter of the usable energy density and the batteries have far shorter lifespan. Your typical lithium battery lasts about 10 years before it's at 80% capacity, which is still pretty decent. A lead acid battery is unusable after about a thousand or so charge cycles, which is just over two and a half years. Do the maths. I've had the system running six months now over winter and my initial excitement soon faded like the sunlight. Looking at my power meter, while it does show me using less power, it's not made any noticeable difference to my bill. I mean, right, the government has been giving me an extra 67 quid over this period as well. And not even that has really made a difference to my bills. That's just how insane this stuff is. Help us, please. I think I'll have retired before this system ever pays for itself from generating electricity alone. My dodgy maths calculated it pay for itself in 20 years or whatever. Except it wouldn't. The batteries would have died several times over by then. So yeah, a wise investment this was not. While my setup isn't great, it isn't terrible either. From a purely financial perspective, this is a complete waste of money. But I've learned so much, and that's kind of my thing here. I like to do technical projects just to learn things. Sometimes the process is the point, not necessarily the outcome. I'm now much more clued up on what I would need from a whole house solar setup. And by obsessively tracking my energy usage over the past six months, I've realised I literally cannot switch any more things off. Energy is just expensive, and the escape that I've decided on is to decouple what I use from the power company until all this crap sorts itself out. But in my opinion, I don't think this crap is sorting itself out anytime soon. And I'm not going to wait. As I hinted earlier, for me there's an escape. It seems solar setups are a bit like buses. They're never around when you need one, then two turn up just after each other. So stick around for an interesting story about getting solar on my entire house. I just need to finish getting some more statistics about it. If you got this far, you're exactly the kind of person I'm making these videos for. And it'd be really nice if you considered becoming a subscriber. It's actually really motivating knowing people are choosing to watch my content and that I'm not just talking into the void. So click my channel icon, which is up here on the screen, and I'll see you in the next video.